I have something relaxing for your brain. It will help you with your hand-eye coordination. You don't have to be stressed. It's just some easy doodles for Valentine's Day. You can use them in your bullet journal. You can just take some of the doodles and put them together and make a Valentine's Day card, whatever you wanna do with them. But they are just mainly to relax and, you know, just to practice. Now, these are gonna be with watercolor marker and they're simple as can be. Let's just jump into it. If we haven't met, I'm Viv. This is Art with Viv and let's go to the studio. <laughs> These doodles aren't meant to be stressful. They're not meant to be difficult. Just do the best you can. Have fun with them. The first thing I did, this is a chocolate dipped strawberry. I'm going in there with a mid brownish tone. I don't, I'm not even going to say the names of the markers, the exact names because I want you to use whatever you have and just make it work. Next, I'm going in with a little bit of a pale, sort of a yellow brown color, a really pale beigey brown. And now I'm going in with a rich chocolate brown and I'm just layering those on top of each other where I want the really dark colors to be. The dark shadows, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. And I'm just going straight over all of that lighter color. And I am coming back with that mid-tone brown again, and I'm blending it into the darker brown. And then I'm adding a little bit more of that darker brown, just where I want the darkest shadows to be. And as you see, as you layer it, it just keeps getting darker and darker as you go. But that gives, that's what gives it the dimension is having the, the really light lights, the mid-tones, and then your darks and your really dark darkest. That's what gives it its shape. So I'm just going in there with a little bit more of that chocolatey color and then blending it back in with some more of the mid-tone brown. It's just, these um, watercolor markers are wonderful. You can blend them right on top of each other. I want you to see what I'm doing. So I'm just pulling it in there a little bit closer so you can see. Also notice that I left some of the paper white for the highlights. Now I'm coming in with a like a pale yellow color a nice warm yellow. I'm just going right across the top of the strawberry. Then I'm coming in with a little bit of a pink. And this is sort of a bright hot pink going right along the edges of that yellow that we just put in. I'm going around where I'm going to color in the seeds. Now I'm coming in with more of a lush berry type red. It's really pretty. And I'm going right into that pink, right into that yellow. And of course, I'm going around the seeds, leaving the seeds white, like plain, the plain paper shining through because I don't want the red to influence the color of my seeds. So now I've just got my clear blender, the clear colorless marker, and I'm just blending all these colors together. The yellow, the pink, and that juicy peachy, not really peachy, but kind of berry red. And that's all I'm doing to that for right now. Now I want you to just do take a deep red or a magenta, whatever you have. Don't stress out if you don't have the exact colors. That's why I'm not talking about the colors, the exact colors. I'm just giving you the idea of what color family it is so you can use what you have on hand. And you just go in there and put a little shadow behind the seeds. And then I just am coloring in the seeds with a little bit of a yellow color. And this adding a little bit more brownish yellow. It can be like a yellow ochre or a golden yellow. It's up to you. Then I'm just taking a little bit of a deeper red and coming in there and adding a little bit of shadows into some of the areas, some really dark shadows taking a pale green and I'm going all over those leaves and then I'm coming in with a little bit of a darker green adding in some line work and then with an even deeper green like the darkest green and just doing in the shadows 
coming back in with that colorless blender and blending all three of those colors together so that it looks a little bit smoother. And I am using marker paper for this. I'm just taking my jelly roll pen, adding some highlights to those seeds around on the chocolate in some areas just to lighten up some of that really dark brown that we got there. Next, I'm moving over to the candy, the suckers. I'm just taking a really pale pink and I am just coloring that in. I'm going around the I Heart You and leaving that white. And then I'm just going to come back in with a little bit of a darker pink on top of this. Just blend it right on top. And again, you can use whatever colors you have. And you don't have to keep layering the colors like I'm doing. You can do it and just skip the lighter color and just do the one layer of the pink. But I wanted those two colors to blend to give me a new color so that it's not a really, really hot pink, but it's also not very pale. So now I'm coming in with that deep pink, putting in some shadows right around the edges of that heart. And then I'm just taking my colorless blender, blending in that shadow so that there's not such a harsh line. It softens that edge there. And I did a really pale pink inside of the I Love You. And I really wish I had left it white because it kind of blurred it out a little bit, made it too blurry to read, but Again, you live and learn, you practice. Again, with the jelly pen, I'm just adding a few highlights here and there, wherever I think it needs to be lightened up. And I decided to take my gel pen, my little white jelly pen, and outline the I Heart You so that it gives it a little bit more definition. Now I'm taking that pale pink and just doing a spiral for the other lollipop. And then on the inside of that, I'm doing an even paler pink so that we have two shades of pink in there. And then on this other one, I don't like that color, so we're changing it to a different color. It's sort of a reddish pink. And I'm just coloring that whole popsicle, not popsicle, lollipop in, taking a really pale blue and doing this just coloring in the sticks and then taking a little bit of a darker blue adding some shadows right at the bottom and right under each lollipop and then a nice juicy red for the bows and that's just to give it a little extra something something now I'm taking my white gel pen and we are just going to add some highlights into that spiral lollipop. And then I am drawing some little white hearts, but my ink is still a little bit wet on that lollipop. So my hearts are turning pink because the white is bleeding into that red. I will come back later and do those white uh, hearts a little bit darker once that dries. Now on my lips, these are big luscious kissy lips. I'm putting a really pale pink right around the highlights of the lips and, and just kind of coloring in the like upper part of the lip and then on the bottom lip, the bottom part of that lip. And I just put in so, sort of that fleshy pink color. Now I'm coming in with a nice red lipstick color and just going around and around and around. Now, if you are part of my Patreon, if you're in the dabbler level, you will get the outline drawings to all these doodles so you can just trace them and practice them yourself. Um, and I will add a link so that you could get access to the dabbler tier of my Patreon. So now once I get that lipstick red in there and some of that pink, I'm just, again, taking my colorless blender and just blending all of that together. And that just looks really pretty. I like, I like all that red. I love red. Red's one of my favorite colors. Now I'm taking more of a brighter pink. And again, on that bottom lip, just coloring in around the edges and just sort of blending it into that sort of fleshy pink. And then we are gonna, of course, take our juicy red 
and add that in there right on top of all those other colors and outline the lips and I'm adding a little bit more of that hot pink just around into some of those areas also helping it blend into the red and then I'm just going to take my colorless blender and just really blend that out especially around the highlights so that it looks a lot softer now I'm going to take like a deep maroon color or burgundy whatever color that you have and I'm going to fill in around those lips and into the center part of the lips where the mouth is a little bit open from the kiss but we are going to color that in with that deep burgundy add a few little lines here and there so that it looks like the lips are puckered up again this is to be relaxing this is not nobody's gonna grade you on it you do it however you like and now that the heart that is dry up there I'm coming with another layer now you can see my little white hearts a lot better now that that ink dried a little bit more now you can see that I have some little hearts up there I'm also going around these highlights on the lips adding a few highlights around where the darkest parts are right around where the lips meet each other and just putting in a little bit more of the highlights and that just gives the highlights a little more brightness and just adds a few little few little more splashes of light around the lips now we are going to do these two little lovebirds i'm taking the palest pink and i am just coloring the whole body of the lovebird in this really pale pink this is the girl lovebird so i'm making her a nice feminine pink I'm coming with a little bit of a darker pink right over that but I'm letting her belly stay that light pink notice I didn't go all the way out to her belly it's still a light pink and get her little tail feathers and her little top knot in so now you can really see how light her belly is compared to her head and her her chest well, not her chest her thorax her back and abdomen now we are going to go ahead color in that wing it's a little bit too light for me so i'm going to come in with a deeper more hot pink and color that wing in and the other wing on the other side where you can just see the little tip i decided her tail feathers should match her wings and so should her little top knot and just doing some little dots down her breast down her tummy and just go ahead and outline that tummy I also did that hot pink where her beak is so now we're gonna do the boy and I decided he's gonna be a nice lavender and purple so we're doing the lightest lavender color first just like we did the female we colored the whole thing in with the really pale color first although he's gonna end up being a bit darker a bit darker than I intended but I still think he comes out cute so I'm not even like I said I'm not even stressed about it now I'm taking a deeper more red purple going ahead doing his top knot doing his little wings with this reddish purple almost a magenta color again just use what you have use what you have on hand I'm going to add another layer of that same purple we put down first but I'm going to let his belly stay lighter just like we did with the female bird his belly is a light lavender and I'm going with a really deep purple and I've just put that really deep purple on his beak and I'm just trying to decide what what am I going to do to him next because he's looking a little a little blah I don't know let's go with a really dark purple let's do, let's just make him really dark purple and really contrast that tummy so I'm just going just go in there with this deep really like almost a grape colored purple like one of those deep concord grape colors let his belly stay that lavender and do a few little dots just like we did with her
put a little little pink heart in between them or a little red heart I decided I was gonna add a few more hearts that one little heart just wasn't enough for me so I just added a few more I'm just ad-libbing I'm just going on going with the flow however I think it's gonna look good and again the highlights with the jelly pin on his tail on his wings around his little tummy because his tummy is so dark and then we're just gonna put a little eye there for him a little eye for her 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 eye probably needs to be darker I'll fix that in a second and then once I get all these little highlights in let's give him a few highlights across the top of his head and her too I think when I come back and outline it I'm gonna make her eye a little darker because you really can't see it now I'm coming back with that brown that sort of yellowy brown and this is a jar full of love it's just a jar full of love and we got our jar full of love covered with a little fabric cap and now I'm coming with that mid-tone brown going toward the darker brown notice I left a little white highlight there blending it with my colorless blender now remember you can clean your blender in between that colorless blender clean it in between colors once you blend the colors you'll want to clean it off because like I don't want to bring purple into this beautiful brown that I'm working on and how you clean it is you take a clean sheet of paper scrap sheet of paper and you just mark all over it until all the color comes out and it is it is clear again so don't be sure to clean that blender between each color because you don't want to get purple into this brown that we're working on so I've got you can't see it on camera I've got a scrap sheet of paper that I am rubbing that color let's blender on until all the color comes back out of it before I start on a new color so now I'm coming into the inside of the jar I'm coloring it a pale pink notice I have some hearts in there because this is a jar full of love and so I'm coloring around the heart shapes the heart shapes are going to be a different color I'm also not coloring all the way to the edge of the jar because you know how when you look at a jar you can see the glass edges the round glass edges so we want to get that in there now I'm taking a nice deep valentiny red and coloring in the hearts in our little jam jar full of love easy peasy this should be relaxing this should not be stressful for you now I'm taking that really pale blue just really pale blue and going around the edges of the jar because that is going to you know dictate where the jar is coming with a little bit of a darker blue adding some shadows adding some shadows right under where that little lid cover is we need to add this bow I decided it was going to be like a really bright yellow so we're just doing a bright yellow bow around it I'm gonna let that dry and now we're gonna do our love potion number nine okay it's just love potion and I decided since we got so much red and pink that we're gonna go back with some purple and we are gonna color that potion purple and go around those hearts that are in the love potion bottle and then just color all of that liquid in there that nice lavender color And it, even if your strokes come out a little bit streaky you can always come back with your blender and blend those strokes out some as long as you're using good marker paper or good watercolor paper then you know you can do that now I'm just doing a lighter lavender up at the top to look like the top of the water not water love potion what's wrong with me it's love potion we can cast a spell now I'm just taking some of that pale blue and I am coloring in the glass container of this love potion just coloring all around with that really pale blue and around the edges up to the tippy top 
And then I'm going, of course, to go with a little bit of a darker blue for the shadows. And just so that you can tell that that is a glass jar. And just some more shadows here and there, wherever I feel it, wherever I feel like it needs it. And now I'm going to do some like magenta red, some really purpley red hearts in there. Staying with that kind of purpley theme. Decided I was going to put a few more in there. Like they're kind of bubbling out of the potion. Now we're going to go to some browns, a really pale brown, sort of a yellow brown, probably like a sienna, a raw sienna. And color in that cork. We want to go with a darker brown for the shadows, just like we did with the chocolate on the strawberry and with the cap on that jar of love jam. Now that this jam is dried a little bit, I'm going to take my jelly roll pen, add the highlights here and there on my little hearts, on my bow, on the little cap. And that just gives it some dimension, a little bit more interest. Remember, these are doodles. These are just to relax and sort of practice your hand-eye coordination. And it's a really good practice for that. Just anytime you are writing, even if you're writing words, anytime you're drawing, anytime you're doing something with your hands and your eye, that needs your hands and your eyes to get it accomplished, you're working on hand-eye coordination. But this is one of the best exercises, I think, just by doodling because it's fun and you got something cute at the end and everybody loves cute I love cute so now I have got my micron pen and like I said her little eye was almost non-existent so I had to do it do a little black eye in there so that you could see her little eye and gave her some eyelashes I also did a little black line under that white part of his eye just adding some little dots for cork holes in my cork with my pen. And then I think I'm just gonna start outlining things just so that we give it a little bit more definition. Outlining their little wings. I'm looking to see how that is. And then I finally just go crazy and say, you know what, I'm gonna outline the whole daggone thing. This is the first time I've done these. I didn't practice them first, so I am in real time here making decisions about how I am going to execute this. So I decided I was just going to outline everything. And that's all I'm doing. Again, my, if you're one of my Patreon dabbler tier, then you will get the outline drawing for this so that you can trace them and practice them for yourself. And once you finish, you will have a cute little page full of doodles. And you can use these on cards. You can use them in your journal. You can make stickers out of them if you know how to do such things. There's all kinds of things that you can do with these. And um, just be creative with it. And maybe it will spark your imagination and you can make some even more doodles of your own. hope you've enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a thumbs up uh, consider sharing it with a friend 
especially someone that you know that likes art. And let me give a special shout out to my patrons. Without you, I cannot continue to do this, but y'all have been so good to me and I appreciate it so much. So special thank you to you guys and um, y'all happy painting.